Here's an interesting topic I want to <clears throat> tell everybody about. I mean, this is this is just very simple, very very simple. Okay. All right. Now, since we all know through the theory I'm developing, the star isn't exactly the source of fusion reactions. It's just electrochemical. It's a large electrochemical event and thermochemical. So, how exactly does a star have its iron? How? Okay. All right. Pretty simple. Iron meteorites and star shrapnel enter in, and what happens is, is they're vaporized. As they enter the star, the metal is vaporized, and the star collects it. And over time, that vaporized material moves towards the center and starts building that little clump of material in the center, the iron and nickel. And over time, the star will contract. And it will smash into another star. Boom, right? <laughs> and the cycle will repeat itself. So basically, it's a cyclical thing. And the reason why I wanted to say that is because astronomers, they didn't know about how a galaxy was born. They assumed everything came from Big Bang. Since we know Big Bang is wrong, completely false nonsense, we can go ahead and hypothesize other ways of fusing matter together. And that is via galactic nuclear synthesis. It doesn't exist yet in the established version of events. Galactic nuclear synthesis is when a galaxy is born. You have your main galaxy. Oh, crap. You know what? I can't draw very well. Let's just assume this is a barred spiral. So you have two big arms going out. Now, that galaxy will eject quasars. Okay? This is a quasar. They're, they're local to a host mother galaxy. Okay? This is a fully formed galaxy, ejects little baby quasars, makes a quasar field. Okay? And what happens is that quasar is actually where galactic nucleus and this is happening. Because what it's doing is ejecting matter at almost superluminal, or no, luminal velocities. Not superluminal, that doesn't make any sense. Almost luminal velocities, and that material forms giant ionized clouds of the now fused matter. This is the area where the fusion occurs. That's when the material gets injected out and fuses mixed heavier elements, and that is where iron, nickel, and other elements are formed. All elements. Now, I'm not too sure what's happening right there. That's still theoretical. But one thing's for sure, that is where fusion is happening. Now inside of stars, the stars are inside of these big lobes. That's where the stars form. And the purpose of a star is just to dissipate the energy of galaxy birth. They're just dissipative events. And as well, they recycle the material. Now the reason why I want to say they re recycle the material is I don't know if people know this, but there are four major iron isotopes that occur naturally. Now, an isotope is iron, but it has a different number of nucle nucle nucleotides in it, inside the, inside the uh, center of the atom or whatever. 
Now, iron 54, you can look this up online. Iron 54 has a theoretical half-life of this many years. <laughs> How many would that be? Okay. All right, we have million, billion, trillion, quadrillion, quintillion, sextillion, 31 sextillion years. That's its half-life. And this is a naturally occurring iron isotope that exists in 5.845% of all iron naturally, that naturally occurs. Now, what strikes you as off about this? Does anything stick out to you? I think it should. It means since the stars recycle the matter and you have some iron that Basically, we can say it doesn't decay. It's stable. What that means is the stars can recycle the iron, and it also means that if we are to assume the entirety of the universe is only this many years old, we have no way to account for this. Okay? Can we tell the difference between those two numbers? Really, people? This is the decay rate of this. What we're looking at here is a universe that essentially is timeless. Okay? Nobody can imagine that many years. And I challenge you to find somebody that can conceptualize how long of a time that is. Okay? And another reason why I wanted to go over this is when a star collects its iron from its environment, from recycled stars, you know, after the iron was synthesized during galactic nucleosynthesis, we have a much more reasonable method for making iron cores. Now, established with science, They want you to believe that here's the vacuum of outer space, okay? Iron is in preformed pebbles which clump together, okay? To make, obviously, a bigger pebble, and then you have bigger pebbles clump together. to make even bigger pebbles, okay? That's how they make, um, what do you call them? Pre-planet rocks or whatever? I don't even know. It's kind of dumb to look at things like that because they're missing three essential elements to making iron clump together. Number one, pressure. The iron meteorites that we see have what are called Thomson structures. I've talked with this to Charles Nunno. Thomson structures need an incredible amount of pressure to form. So to say that they form inside of outer space, inside a vacuum, absent pressure is what we call absurd. Absurd. Number two, you have heat. Establishment of science wants you to believe that this process from clumping these objects together will make them heat up. We can do a simple experiment to falsify this. All you have to do is take an iron dumbbell, okay, go to the gym. I just got back from the gym and set it on the ground. Say, you know, like this. 
or set it on top of another iron dumbbell. And then what you're going to do is measure the heat of these two things touching together to see if they fuse together and weld together as we have found with iron meteorites. Okay? No heat. There's no heat here. The third problem. No gravity. They propose that these objects know where to clump together. But what is the gravitational field of a one centimeter sized particle? It is non-existent. So basically we have three absurd conclusions of establishment science. We have iron welding together, making Thompson structures absent pressure. We have them absent heat. We have absent gravitational field. And we can solve this very, very easily. And I already did it in the earlier, uh, in the earlier uh, minutes of this talk. The star is the source of the gravity, is the source of the heat, and is the source of the pressure as it gravitationally collapses. Boom. Three problems solved in one go. Say where all the iron comes from. Meteorites. Boom. Vaporized. Collect in the center. Form the little rocky iron core that we're all familiar with in geology class. <laughs>